economy on what some of these private companies can do. Joining me now for an exclusive conversation is Raniel Rukram Mensinghe, the president of Sri Lanka. Mr. President, thank you for giving us a little bit of your very busy schedule to try and understand the complexities of greening an economy that's also um, ha has issues in trying to, to grow. So first of all, what are some of your green initiatives? Well, our greening initiatives will start with uh, encouragement of the renewable energy. Sri Lanka has, I think, uh, we will have about 100 gigawatts finally of solar wind power available, which is far more than our needs. So it's a question of investing, and the investors will be able to, at some stage, export it, either in the form of green hydrogen or into India. We are having energy connectivity to India. So this is just a start. And Mr. President, is it easy to find that capital? Are investors happy to come into Sri Lanka and give you some of what's needed? Yes, once we start, which we have already done with two or three investors we are negotiating, other will come in. I think there is hunger for good investments. And especially a country like Sri Lanka, where we will have excess energy available. But is this because there are opportunities of a good return, or is this just because it's the right thing to do? Like, what is your, what do you tell investors who are thinking about coming? Investors will not come to do the right thing. They are coming because they think there's a good return. Up for them to judge. Can you we want to open up the sector. How, how big do you want it to be? So you, you, you mentioned a couple of things, also looking at exporting possibly to some of, of your uh, of your neighborhood. How uh, how quickly could that come, that you're doing it, so it, much it, green energy? It will it, 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 take a bit of time. The connectivity has to be, uh, we have to start the connectivity. Mm -hmm. We just agreed on it a few months ago. And in India, we'll have a big demand. I mean, there's already Bangladesh, Bhutan, and uh, Nepal are connected to India. So that's one. But then we find we will have sufficient even for other purposes. Sri Lanka also has its economic challenges. So by getting green investment, could that propel actually GDP and and also labor? It, it will certainly help us with the GDP, but it's a commitment that we get to 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius. Actually, Sri Lanka is also planning to uh, speed up the net zero campaign from 2050 to 2040. Mr. President, how are the conversations going here at COP28? There was an agreement yesterday in terms of some of the things. It's, it was unexpected because at other COPs, there's always been infighting. Is there a willingness of leaders to come together? Well, we have to show the willingness. We haven't had that many agreements. But uh, this, this fortnight is crucial. We've got to show the world that we can deliver. That's, that's, that's the question because there are too many disagreements among us. I don't, see the, I don't see the need for that, because if we all go along with the IPCC uh, recommendations, then the differences can be only in the means of implementing, not on the policy to be followed. But what does success look like to you? Is it money actually being pledged in the right places, or is it agreements on cutting gas emissions? It could be fossil fuels. Is it pledges no, there, or there money? There is no agreement on fossil fuel, and there are no pledges on the table either. But should there be? There should be at least a commitment. No one has seen sort of uh, even willing to enter into a commitment, yeah. so as the loss and damage fund uh, report showed. But is it a worry that actually the, the president of COP comes from big oil with reports that he was also trying to get funds for advancing fossil fuel interest whilst being in charge of COP? No, when we, when we selected UAE, we knew that UAE is a uh, petroleum exporting, gas exporting country. So then whoever comes from UA has to be connected. UA hasn't got, they don't cultivate tea, so that's, that's the outcome of it. But, but do you think still enough can be done? Well, yes, I think there's on this matter. Enough can be done. Let, let the UA, you have to have a decision. Either if you don't want extra countries that are involved in the oil industry, then don't have them. But if you want them to chai, then you have to accept the fact that they are not going to shut down their fossil fuel today to accommodate the COP28. Uh, but then you have to get them in and discuss with them too.
Okay, Mr. President, thank you so much for joining us. That was, of course, Raniel Uyghur Masingi, the president of Sri Lanka. We'll have plenty more heads of state right here joining us on set at the Bloomberg set at COP28. We're joined shortly by Kyriakos Mitsotakis, the prime minister of Greece, for an exclusive conversation.